This episode of Legendary is brought to you by Audible. For a free 30-day trial and audiobook, head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Gamebreaker TV. What's up, everybody, and welcome, welcome, well, uh, welcome, well, bum, well, bum, I guess. New word in the dictionary, well, bum. This is Legendary 144. I'm Mike Shaffnett. Tonight, the world first race is almost over, and it just damn well began. The plot thickens around the BlizzCon Arena tournament, and it seems the Timeless Isle is a little bit too bloody for most people. All that and more, but first, <laughs> joining us from WoW Insider Zam, and right here on Gamebreaker TV. All the way over here in America, where it's no longer 4 a.m., Ms. Olivia D. Grace. Hello, how's it going? Good. It's, it's weird. It's not 4 a.m. It's like like it's a normal time of day. It's 8 a.m. We, we were just going to talk about that. We, we were just talking about that on a pre-show. What's it like to do the show like, and it's be able to go weird. do something it's, after? It's like... It's 8.02 p.m. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to go... I'm actually going to go do other things after the show rather than just going to bed. Well, now you do other Quite things cool. after Legendary when, when you're over in, in Europe. I can. You, 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 you I start can. your day. It's 4 a.m. <laughs> yes, you go, you, you go start your day. <laughs> get up, go to work, have my morning coffee. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's just weird. It's just and kind of cool, but also weird. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us once again, assistant producer of Waypoint, World of Warcraft Waypoint, and host of the HXC podcast, Mr. Squishy. How's it going, Squish? How's it going? Good. Glad to have you back, man. Thanks for coming back on the show. No problem. Glad to be here. All right. So first up, let's just jump right into it. Not waste any time. Flex rating has undergone some big changes over the past week. Um, if you guys kind of think back to, you know, uh, legendary <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about how the lockout system for, for flex raid was going to be progress that was equal to that of the least progressed person in the raid. I think it was about two, maybe three days ago, there was a tweet that went out um, and Blizzard has basically changed this now. Um, but it was originally so that if you had killed the first three bosses, let's say, hey, uh, we're, we're, we're in this awesome new feature where we can three man flex raid. Three of us are cool, but Jeremy, Squishy, you're late. You're 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 five hours too late. And Olivia started without you. And we, the two of us, killed three bosses on our own because we're boss like that. And then Jeremy logs on. And he's like, "Hey, do. hey, hey, guys, I want to join." And we're like, "Yeah, no, we're kind of at the end here. <laughs> I don't really want to go back and clear three more bosses all over again. You're gonna have to wait." Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it really wasn't as flexible as uh, the way they probably wanted it to be with its old mode. And it's now kind of been changed so that boss progression is now based on the group leader's progress. And I think this is this is a much better thing here. This is much more traditional to what we're used to, to what we're seeing with all of the old systems um, and really kind of helps discourage people from not adding new people. On additional nights because that was becoming a problem people didn't want to bring people on future nights or well, yeah, if sure. people showed up an hour later and and they had already progressed past the boss a certain boss right yeah i mean why would you like why would you go back and do the boss again and i think the the qualification which blizzard gave um earlier on was that oh well you can you still get valor and you can still coin roll on these bosses and i just like i i kind of think we said at the time and obviously they've now agreed with us that you know we that we didn't think that was enough we didn't think that was that was enough that people would be happy to bring in new people and then take two big steps like or potentially three steps back through a raid just because they brought in a new person it just made it less like less suitable for what the, the proposed purpose of the whole system was in my opinion now uh, i just want to clarify that 
uh, if if you were in a flex raid and you wanted to invite another person, I'm pretty sure it would still allow you to continue from where you were. And the change was only to if you were going in this right. like a subsequent day. Sure, or like yeah. A so if you're coming after. in the next day, bringing in, bringing in another person would then mean you have to go right. back again. Okay, so I was yeah. I was I was unclear. I guess I was that was more my fault. I was implying uh, same night kind of scenario. So that was my fault. Miscorrection or miscorrection? Incorrect on my part. <laughs> um, so what does this does this mean though here that you can kind of get locked to bosses that you haven't killed for the week because you know since it it it, it uses the same system for the most part they they've explained that the tech is very similar to the way that LFR works so if that's the case does that mean that you're going to be able to go back um, since the raid will be starting at boss four let's say, and I join on the second day, will I be able to find another flex raid uh, another night to clear boss one, two, and three and still get loot from it? Yeah, you absolutely can. Christo went onto the forums in a follow-up post to the uh, blue post that's been bandied around a lot and said that absolutely you can go back in. It doesn't lock you out of the first three bosses like it would for a normal raid. Like You don't have to then accept like four, three or four bosses killed in this win. You can definitely go back in a different group and then go through those first three bosses and still get loot. And obviously you've still got your like if you kill the fourth boss, you wouldn't be able to get loot off the fourth boss again. You could still use your valor points. You could still use your coin rolls. So it's it's like it it's exactly the same as LFR in that respect, which is good. I think it makes it like it's genuinely flexible. Like it's a really, really, really genuinely flexible rating system now. And I think it's it's a really, really good change. I really like it. It's um it's yeah it's made it into what it should have been in the first place. Does anybody kind of have any inclination why? why they thought it was a good weird a uh, good idea to start that way i mean olivia you said that that was kind of the way that they designed it from the beginning right because they they had thought that 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 was more flexible for people well yeah i don't really quite know what they were thinking about when they put the initial lockout system in i find it a bit like i think we found it a bit weird at the time we were trying to qualify it by saying oh well it's in wings and so it's not actually that bad like you're not going to have to go all the way back to the start again and i think i think it was pat was saying yeah no it's fine because you'll just be able to like there'll be lots of groups going so it'll be okay and you can just jump in and out and people will be cool with it because you can use valor and coin rolls on the bosses that you're re-killing and it's just like yeah no no idea it, I, I don't know quite what they were going with it i think it's an, it was an odd choice, and I'm glad they've rectified it. Yeah, I'm pretty no. sure they said it was tech, wasn't it? Tech issues was that it? they claimed. That's why they did it in the original. Uh, did they did it originally? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I believe that, but I, I feel at like least that's it's kind better of their, now. That's kind of their fallback of of it, oh, it's it's uh, the tech it's the technical tech. limitations. This is this is the way that it has to be done, even though we thought this is the way it was supposed to be done. Um. Now, I believe you also said that you guys, uh, you, you, by doing this, this new system, you can still go in and get Valor and Coin Rolls for, for every kill. Is it every subsequent kill, or is that uh, once through the, through, the, through the lockout system? To my understanding, you can use Valor and Coin Rolls on every kill. To my understanding, because I remember, again, we were talking about this when it first came out, when it was first announced, that you could keep using them. So that it was, it was the case that you could, um, you know, you could just keep going, you could keep coining. We were saying, oh, well, people will just go in and totally spam all their coins away on this, and they'll be like grinding through it to just get the loot over and over and over again. So as far as I, if I, if I've got it right, then yes, absolutely, you can just keep going. With it. So it does, it is definitely the case. So it does make it, it. I think it's a really good system now. I think this was the final little change they needed to make it into a really good system. All right, so Flex is back on track. And I'm going to take us off track for a second and tell you guys about a sponsor that we have right here on GameBreaker. Audible.com is an amazing service with just thousands of audiobooks, with over hundreds of, of hours of, of listening uh, goodness. And for all of you World of Warcraft fans, they actually have four of the World of Warcraft novels that you can download right now. They've got the brand new uh, Vulgar and Shadows of the Horde, as well as the Tides of War for Jaina Proudmoore, Storm Rage, and even Wolfheart. Now, a lot of people, you know, myself, I'm a druid at heart, so the Storm Rage book is, is a great place for me to start. Um, but I think if you're really looking to get caught up in the lore, and I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but if you want to be caught up in everything that's going on in the uh, Siege of Orgrimmar ending cinematic, when you finally take down Garrosh, reading the Tides of War and reading Shadows of the Horde really helps build 
uh, your understanding of why that cinematic plays out the way that it does. And it's a great opportunity to, to get caught up on on the story so if you guys haven't checked out these books i highly recommend it. and you can check them out the best part about audiobooks and and this is kind of one of the really cool things is let's say we're i won't say we're raiding because your raid leader might get mad but let's say you're doing dailies that you're running around the timeless aisle <laughs> wait or, well i wouldn't be doing dailies no you can't say that I wouldn't be doing dailies. <laughs> your your battle your your random battleground random queuing. battlegrounds okay i'm cool with that what better? I mean, a lot of people when you're if, if you're doing it by yourself, it can sometimes be boring trying to grind honor. I myself am trying to get geared up for PvP again um, because I've got my arena partners who want to start doing games and start doing arenas now. And obviously, the first thing I need to do is, is get honor gear. So while mm -hmm. grinding through Battlegrounds, simply just throw on Audible and listen to one of these awesome audiobooks while you're grinding up old honor or or maybe, you know, doing dailies, whatever the case may be. There's, there's tons of time when you're playing World of Warcraft to check out an audiobook and have it playing in the background. That and could actually be a way for me to get into lore, like actually to actually learn about lore, to do it whilst me, I'm actually did doing I just, Battlegrounds. Did I just turn that Olivia could actually be a, way. a way to get turned, uh, <laughs> Olivia onto lore? That's awesome. <laughs> OMG, no way. It's audible, that's how you're gonna do it. Audible.com slash Game Break. Uh -huh. If you guys head on over right now, you guys will get a free audiobook. So you can pick up one of these World of Warcraft books right now and you'll get a free 30 day trial. So head on over to audible.com slash Game Breaker. Um, let's move on. And we've got a lot to cover this week. So um, big news the world first race has begun. Heroics came out this week. Everybody is ready. We're going to start watching for the next couple months because it's going to be this awesome really slow progression <laughs> right right nope wrong not not even <laughs> close well it could yet be i guess it could, it could be these last couple bosses could uh be a little bit of a wall but progress uh progress has slowed but the first 10 the and, and out of 14 if i'm not mistaken right the first mm -hmm. 10 yeah. of the raid um have already gone down as fast as uh, U.S. Guild Blood Legion actually hit 10 of 14 just 11 hours after the raid opened. That's yeah, that's almost a, that is almost a boss an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, like you know, uh, people from Midwinter, like definitely confirmed from Midwinter. And so then presumably also Method and Blood Legion were actually one and two shotting bosses on their way through. Like <laughs> that's kind of crazy in a heroic progression race. Like I remember talking to, and we were talking to Trekkie on Legendary a while back after the Throne of Thunder progression, and I think he was saying something on the lines of, you know, they did like, you know, there wasn't any bosses that they would do it pulling once, put it that way, like it was, you know, 20 pulls on this one, 30 pulls on this one, 90 pulls on this one, and so on and so forth, but they definitely weren't pulling any bosses just once. So it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. And I think it was like, well, surprising. So before we get into this here, um, World first race. Obviously, everybody kind of has their their own favorites, their own home guild. <laughs> um, who are you guys supporting for the first the the world first heroic garage kill? Um, are you guys watching the ten man race at all? I know me. I always just kind of default there. There's a couple like method is obviously a big one, but I think just American you know pride and and I actually I I hung out. I, I got to meet the guild leader of Blood Legion uh, who lives here or used to live here in California. I don't know if he still does or not. Um, but I kind of always, every time I see Blood Legion at the top of the, at, at the top of the charts, I get excited about Blood Legion. Do you guys have any <laughs> that you, you guys want to see win? Methods, method all the way for me. I'm all about that. I am a, I am a shameless, unabashed method fan girl. I really am. What about you, uh, I, I definitely have to go for Blood Legion US here, even though I live in Canada, but I guess North America. So. Blood Legion for me. Yeah. And Olivia's in USA right now, too. So you. I, I'm in the USA right now. So I'm being a, a big <laughs> No, I'm not going to do your chanting, Mike Shaffer. I'm being a traitor to my current locality and sticking with Blood Legion. If because, you don't do yeah, that chant with me, they're going to deport you. If they, I'm going to get deported. God, okay. Jesus, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, no, method all the way for me. So, Europe, with, with this case, obviously, Europe had to be freaking out over this because. Um, they actually had to start a day later than Blood Legion. That's obviously a huge to be hmm. ten bosses deep before you even before you know your uh, your opponents even get a chance to step into the raid. That's a huge advantage. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's not a full, it's not a full day. It's sort of like the Tuesday in the US or the Wednesday in the EU, but because of the time zones and everything, it's like it's I haven't actually worked out how long it actually is in hours, but yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely behind. Like I if I had been method, I would have been a bit sort of mm, okay, well, I'm sure it'll still be fine if they can go through them this quickly, we can probably go through them quicker. And indeed they did. <laughs> And they were like caught up quite quickly, but it still must have been a bit disconcerting. Like, what if yeah, they've gone <laughs> like thirteen actually, or fourteen? Method didn't even catch up. They went on and and grabbed the world first on Thok the Bloodthirster. So mm -hmm. is that is that where they're currently at? Is is yeah. uh, Thok? Yeah, yeah. There's a five way tie for uh, the twelfth boss, which still hasn't been down yet. So. That one seems to have slowed the progression down quite a lot, though. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we've got Method, we've got Blood Legion, we've got Exorcist, Genuine, and Envy, all on 11 of 14. And then there's four, Duality, TG Gaming, Wraith, sorry, I'm reading this off a, off a Nexus, Wraith, and uh, Midwinter on 10 of 14, and then there's like that's number nine. So then the 10th Guild Ascension is on 9 of 14. And the 10-man race is sort of lagging a little bit up behind this year. We've got two on 10 of 14, and then that, the next eight are all on 9 and 8. So it's a little bit behind on the ten man side. But yeah, there's still there's still a ton of guilds who are kind of catching up with Method and Blood Legion. Pretty quick. <laughs> well, in, in regards oh. No, go ahead. Uh, in regards to your earlier thing about the, the time zones, uh US maintenance got delayed, I think like four or five hours this week. Oh. E even though patch day, US servers went up an hour early. So mm -hmm. I think it works out to about an eight or nine hour head start, not not as much as we originally assumed, but it's still a pretty big head start. Yeah, no, it's, can... definitely, it's definitely a head start when they're falling this quickly, it's a head start. Like, that's oh, what yeah. you've got to consider, is like, if they were, if it was, I can't, do you remember how many bosses went down early in Throne of Thunder? Like, I've been looking back through it, and I, obviously no one, like, documents that with Throne of Thunder. Like, it you don't have new six. stories. It was six, okay. It was so there six. Was six, people were stuck Was there six seven. down before, yeah, but, like, I don't think there was six down before the EU even got started. I think it was like maybe one or two. Do you remember? I uh, don't know. I think Manaflas did a live blog during that time. I don't know if it's still there. Yeah, no, I was looking for it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I was like, <laughs> oh, maybe Squishy remembers. But no, it was definitely way, way slower than this. It was it was definitely way behind. But yeah, it must have been scary. If, if you do the math here, because it's... it's uh, the, the wings for, for LFR and Flex are, are four bosses per wing, right? Am I doing that math mm -hmm. right, or am I doing... So, it's so four, 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 four th three, three, Sorry, yeah. yeah, four, four, three, three. So, is this? They talked about the idea of the ramping difficulty because obviously there was the whole um, issue with Throne of Thunder where people hit a, a roadblock early on, and then it it kind of didn't make sense because it was I believe it was Hordon, and then after Hordon, and things were fine for a while. They wanted to make it a much more uh, like inclination of, a, of, of a, a slope or even like a stair stepping um, pattern. So what do you guys think? Is, is this, did they just go too far even on heroic difficulty that, that it's just been too easy to ramp up? Because obviously, as you guys said, we, we've seen it slow at this point. We finally caught up to that difficulty that they're actually trying to progress forward. Well, as did a they, somewhat heroic raider myself here, um, Throne of Thunder was weird in the way difficulty works. You had the the easiest heroic bosses being scrambled across the entire tier with like 1, 6, 10 being the easiest. 1, 2, 6, and 10 being the easiest. Whereas it seems so far this tier is more linear by the heroic, uh, the heroic guilds, which doesn't tell us too much, but it seems to be more steady inclination, which I think is good uh, yeah. just for progression. Yeah, for sure. And I think like um, over at Gamescom, both Tom Chilton and Corey Stockton were saying quite regularly, like in the various different interviews and roundtables, that that's what they were looking for this time. Like I think the like um, Horridon and um, I remember Twin Consorts being one that they bashed their heads against for ages. But obviously that's that's a later one. So maybe a bad example. Um, but there was like Dark Animus, I think, like even in the heroic raid, which happened like the um, Midwinter versus Method heroic raid that happened over at, on Athene's channel for the siege recently. They both wiped on Dark Animus. Like even now, people are still wiping on Dark Animus. Um, so there's like there's definitely sort of these crazy difficult bosses which they just bash their heads against for a while, and they're really really looking for a smooth progress. 
um, this time, which I think, you know, it seems definitely seems like they're getting that. But I think also you've got to consider the, um, the gear side of things. Um, I was chatting about this with some people the other day that it's like the double upgraded heroic Thunderforged gear is equal to the normal mode gear. Like, I think it's like maybe there's maybe one item level in it, but like method are rolling with an item level of 559 as an average across the guild. Blood Legion are rolling with an item level of an average of over 600 across their guilds. So that is the item level of normal modes. Um, so they're actually, they're geared already. <laughs> they're geared right. up to that point already where they're sort of like, they're not, like, I mean, I, you know, Jeremy will know this much better than I will, like how far behind you generally are with the gearing when you're stepping into these heroics. But I don't, if I'm, so do please go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's normally the case that you're geared to an item level equal to the normal mode when you step into the world first heroic progression races. Probably and that not. Was, that was kind of, well, they, that was kind of what they said with because there was a huge blog post about item levels where they hmm. talked about why they placed what they place between LFR, flex, normal, and heroic based on where everyone kind of was currently at in Throne of Thunder. They did take it into consideration, um, but that brings up an interesting point with, with obviously the evolution of item level, with the evolution of now four different difficulties. Is this going to cause a problem for subsequent future raids? Because there's just, there's such a desperation in where they want the perfect, like where the average person is at item level and where this person should theoretically be on par for the next tier. And, and like you said, they're kind of already going into even the heroic modes geared for it. They don't need to sit there and farm. They're not looking to get any benefit out of the normal gear. They're already ready to go through heroic and, and, and they don't need that, that extra little bit of umph anymore. Um, and, right. and they're just able to, to bypass it. Do you think, do you think that this is going to be a future problem? Um, as we see possibly all four systems continue to be introduced with every future raid. I think yes. it's likely, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's likely that they will, like, they'll, they'll look at this tier and they'll, like, this is the first time we've had the Thunderforge. So this is the first time we've had this Thunderforge system in with the double upgrading. And I think, like, they couldn't escalate the item level so far as to make that, like, it would just be a bit crazy if they were saying, oh, well, uh, Raid Finder gear is 559. Like, that would have just been a bit crazy. So they, I don't feel like they could do that. But I think that they'll... Uh, they'll have seen this race and sort of gone, okay, well, these guys have stepped into this with the previous tiers gear being the same as the normal mode tier, the normal mode gear. It seems to me it would make sense if it was the same as the flex tier. Like they would still have to do, like would still be sort of incentivized to do normal, but they wouldn't have, they could completely ignore LFR. So then that those guys wouldn't be put pressured to be doing flex LFR and normal modes like in the first week before progression. And that the hardcore raiders who are like at this item level wouldn't be feeling obliged to do that as well. Um, so it seems to make sense that it would be the same as flex level, but I don't think that they would go back and do it again so that you're stepping straight into the next tier. And also remember we've got an expansion, most likely, between now and the next tier. So there's likely to be a change there too. Jeremy, did you have thoughts you were, you were kind of talking at the beginning of that? Um, yeah, so there's such a big, or the only way for them to really fix it is to make normal gear so much higher than flex and then heroic gear so much higher than normal that it's going to be such a huge upgrade to go from normal or from flex to normal or normal to heroic that if you if your guild like even especially in 10 mans if your guild doesn't get any drops like if you get holy pally gear and you don't have a holy pally your guild's going to suffer from progression because you're not getting gear and that's a problem a huge problem that probably can be fixed via the items, the fabled item squish that's supposedly happening soon. Hmm. Yeah. It will be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting. interesting to see for sure. All right, let's move on. And uh, there's so much to get to. PvP news uh, is next up here to, um, to kind of start off here. Some more news about the Arena Pass Realm and the blizzcon arena tournament so back in episode 142 we were discussing how the tournament realm was pretty much becoming a huge mess and uh, <laughs> there's another story to be involved here this time from one of the top eu teams so briefly olivia catch us up to speed here what's going on <laughs> this is still a mess it's still a mess it hasn't become any less of a mess since no. they um 
since 5.4 happened. So like with just like to recap some of the stuff that had been going on before we had like a, there was a change. They kind of kind of announced that the top eight teams would be going to BlizzCon because there were no regionals. So there's an absence of regional finals. So they kind of announced off the back of that, the top eight teams off the tournament realm, the arena pass realm would be going to BlizzCon. Um, they then changed their mind a week before the tournament realm ended saying, oh, no, 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 sorry. It's, it's, it's tw two of the top teams which was, of course, misinterpreted as the two top teams. Um, so they've got, now they, they have all these people who were like playing a comp that was would be strong in 5-4, but not in 5-3, because you've got to remember that although the tournament at BlizzCon will take place in 5-4, um, the tournament realm was in 5-3, and the tournament like taking place on the tournament realm was also in 5-3. So people were playing 5-4 strong comps, and were then going, oh my god, oh my god, okay, we have to get top two, we're going to have to switch our comp. And then we're going to have to like change that comp and play our way up into the top two. So um, there were other, also other issues like the ladders weren't reset. So the US lost a week of tournament round time. And the ladders weren't working for ages on the website. Um, the EU one, which we'll get to, like it didn't reset properly. No one was sure what was going on there. Um, it was just like just constant, <laughs> constant, constant issues on the tournament round. It's been kind of a bit of a, bit of a problem thing this year. So what's happened now? You said there's there obviously there's the EU EU team issue. What's that all about? Is up of name priest, and uh, I don't actually know who the third member of that team is um, off the top of my head. But they were Olivia. Hang on, can I stop you just real quick? Can, can you just start over real quick? You just froze for a second, so we missed oh, the I first froze. couple seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so there's a team which is comprised of Brain Deadly, who's a hunter. Um, Hydra, who's a priest, both pretty well known, and, and another member. I, I don't actually know off, offhand who that other member is. Um, so they were basically saying, according to them, when the t when the tournament round closed, they were at rank two. Um, according to another team, um, they were at rank two, but the tournament round hadn't actually closed yet. So this other team kept playing and then bypassed them, getting to rank two, which then pushed Brain Deli and Hydra and Co down into rank three thereby removing them from the BlizzCon, like, invite list. So it's sort of this whole drama is unfolding of, like, Brain, De Brain Deadly and Hydra were tweeting Zaheim and Halinka on, obviously on Twitter, where else? Good job. You can tweet on um, Facebook so now. It's, a, it's the new thing. Oh, really? I see, yeah, okay, I, I okay, see at cool. mentions on Facebook all the time, so <laughs> Hootsuite, yeah, so tweet deck. They were tweeting away saying, trying to see if there had, was any confirmation they could get that BTR had actually been closed and that the snapshot had been taken. Um, because it like it's it just kept running for a while, and they weren't sure whether it had actually closed or not. And and both Zahim and Halinka were like, "Oh, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you on this." They were kind of non-committal, like they didn't absolutely turn around and say, "Oh yeah, it's definitely closed now." Um, but the sort of the response I think from Halinka was, "Oh, we're just going to try and get some messaging out on this." Um, so basically, according as far as they were concerned, they had ranked rank two, and the other team was fifteen rating behind them, was able, unable to get any Q pops, so they were you know they were home and dry, and then. Again, according to them, it's all a little bit like suspect. <laughs> so I guess the, the real question here then is obviously the nail in the coffin would be if there was an official blizzard sanctioned shutdown time. And then couldn't they essentially go back and look at the arena match times to see if one team went over or if one team just stopped too soon? Well, it seems like the answer to that question is no. <laughs> no, on the count of there wasn't, like, there was an official shutdown date. And, um, like, they said, looking through the blog post, there was a thing saying it, it ends on August the 28th. And, like, I haven't been able to see any with a specific time on there. And that is basically what the team which managed to leapfrog over uh, Brain Deadly and Hydra has been saying is that there wasn't an official actual shutdown time in hours posted. Um, whether or not that's true, like it's normally the case that they say it shuts down at you know 11:59 Pacific or 11:59 Central East European time. Excuse me. Um, so it's kind of like I'm I'm not entirely sure I believe them there, but it's like it, it's normally the case that things will shut down at certain times in the EU. Like things will either shut at midnight or they'll shut at 3 a.m. when dailies reset. That's sort of recognised times there. And like if it ends on the 28th, you'd kind of expect it to end at midnight on the 28th or at 5 p.m. on the 28th. So it's kind of it's kind of difficult to be sure whether there was genuinely a shutdown time. And it seems like they can't actually, I don't know, obviously we don't know whether Blizzard can go back through the matches that were played and be like, oh, well, this match took place at this time, this match took place at this time. 
if the guys had been logging their matches somehow, then that might have been a good way to do it. But I sincerely doubt they were. So it's a, it's a really difficult, it's a really difficult thing. And obviously, it's like the whole access to getting into the BlizzCon tournament is kind of. It seems like it's hinging on this. So it's it's a really difficult situation. Everyone wants to go to BlizzCon. Sure, but here's here's I guess the other the other the other part of it that you mm. know I'm I'm not really seeming to understand here. Um, I understand this correctly. BlizzCon <laughs> is what's known as a invitational. An <laughs> invitational has the word invite in it. So I think that means Blizzard could really invite people who they want. So if that's the case, if this is causing such an issue and it isn't on the player's end, mm -hmm. couldn't would would Blizzard be stepping outside of their their bounds? At, and and have enough grounds to invite the team, um, or do you think that would cause more issues because Blizzard invited one team and not any of the others that kicked down to got kicked down to Group Three? Yeah, it's that's definitely a difficult thing. Like I think the part of the problem there has been the messaging. Like they said initially that it would be this top eight team because of the absence of regionals, um, and then they sort of said, oh no, it would be. And I think that there was a sort of like a gap in communication there. Maybe the phrasing was unfortunate or something, because there's some people saying, oh, they said two of the top teams, which kind of implies, well, we'll take who we want, but they'll be among the top teams. And then there's sort of the opinion that it was no, the two top teams from each region. So it's kind of, it's tricky, like the, the messaging was possibly not perfectly done there in that they were, you know, telling people different things or just not being particularly clear. And I don't know, like, it seems to me that there should, like, I just feel like this should be done properly, like there should be regionals, there should be sort of a tournament, like a proper tournament to assess who's actually good at this and not just be like, oh, we'll cherry pick these pe these teams from here and this <laughs> That's a long freeze. Um, Do you right. that invitation oh, screen? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that again, Shafter. I didn't catch you. I wasn't. I wasn't saying anything. I was just trying to cover for you and make it look like we all froze with you because <laughs> we we got your back. Oh, thanks, man. You're the best. <laughs> I know. Let's just move on here. Um, move on to some more PvP stuff because if you guys haven't noticed, the new arena season started, and I know a lot of you guys are excited. And then the conquest, the conquest cap broke, and <laughs> and then the vendors had to be removed. And then there's just been some some more issues that are coming out with uh, with the new buff. The crowd chose you, so it's it's just been a swell time to be into <laughs> PvP right now. Um, <laughs> Yeah. First up, first up here, uh, didn't the exact same thing happen here with the vendors at the start of last season? <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly the same thing happened. PvP is just broken and not in the terms of like class balance. It's just broken. Every yeah, time like the whole patch. actual, the whole actual PvP. They just need to remove <laughs> PvP from the game right now and just be done with it because it's it, it has broken. PvP has actually broken. Yeah, the last time there was a bug which related to the um, Tyrannical Conquest achievement, which was the one where you got the 27,000 Conquest points within the season, and that allowed you to buy the Conquest gear for honor. And there was something which was meaning that people were getting that achievement when they totally shouldn't have got it. And they were then allowed to buy uh, Conquest gear for honor really, really early. And kind of similarly this time around, it's um, basically that these people have got a random 28,000 Conquest point cap for no real reason. And it probably is again associated with the catch-up cap, um, because I think that like maybe the season restarted and the catch-up cap recounted and assumed that it was still the previous season or something. Either way, something bizarre I think happened with the catch-up cap and they had to, yeah, math happens, maths happens. <laughs> and they had to basically remove the, basically maths and then the concept. So, so did math <laughs> happen this time? Yes. Let's, yeah, there was basically, there was some people, like, I don't know exactly what caused it, but certain people had a, a conquest cap of 28k, where it should have been so 28,000 as opposed to 2,200, which is a relatively substantial difference between the numbers, between what it should have been and what it actually turned out to be. Um, but it seemed to be quite random. Like, I don't know, there must have been something that caused it to have, like, one or the other. Um, like I logged on and double checked, and I certainly didn't have a twenty-eight thousand <laughs> conquest point cap. 
it's like bad if there's an exploit there like it might not have been not fixed in the eu let, let's go let's go exploit it and get some gear but no unfortunately no it wasn't i didn't get it alas so yeah it's a bit it's a bit of a bizarre one we don't know exactly why it's happened but they're definitely pulled from the patch at the moment this has got to be an absolute damper on any i mean my friends included because like i said we were running around the time style last week we're like this is great. We look, we're, we're running around. We're world PVP in, which we'll get into that in a second. Uh, but we're like, we want to be able to earn gear. And now they've taken the vendors away. So I'm sure every PVP player is, is, is a little bit in a rage right now. So is there any word on when we're going to be getting the vendors back? Not that I know of. Um, <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Olivia? No? Okay. No word? We'll check with you when you come back. Um, the crowd shows you is also another buff that uh, has been having issues. Um, so for those of you guys who don't know, the crowd shows you was a arena buff that got placed in where I can't I I, I can't begin to explain my distaste for this buff uh, because I, I'm one of those people that enjoyed the trolliness of a healer because I was that healer at, at, at a time um, being able to, to extend a match into foreverness. And I, I, I realize why the buff was why the buff exists. Um, I just don't agree with it. Um, what Blizzard did to eliminate this, this nature of, of trolling players and, and extended arena matches where people are just basically prolonging the match and keep resetting their, their cooldowns and, and going again is, um, there was a system in place that would judge the person who had received the lowest amount of health um, and it would give the opposite team a buff where they would take no damage and do a crap ton of damage. It's pretty much a game ender. Um, so that got added in as well. Holy cow, we've lost Olivia altogether and now all the cameras are screwed up. Um, let's see here. I don't... Uh, I can't squishy real quick um so squishy i don't know real quick do you do you know what all what's been going on with the yeah. uh, arena buff yeah so first off um a hot fix was put in today this is the first thing that uh that's my head after yeah I'm, i i i gotta i gotta try and fix this real quick just uh sit sit on your there tippy we. toes while while we fix this sit on my tippy toes yep okay uh so a hot fix was put in earlier today that made it so that players who were cycloned could, in fact, receive the buff in the first place. Um, there were some trolling teams going around, apparently, uh, composed of a druid and a priest, that when the buff was about to be handed out, because I think you can see that now, they would just cyclone the other team so that they couldn't actually receive it. So that was the first thing. And then the other thing um, with the crowd shows you is the, the buff is given to the team that brings the opponent's health the lowest. Now, um, let's say that, you know, Mike Shaft and me and you are fighting, and I, I, get, your, I get your team. Or I kill one of your team members. But before I do, I get him down to 5k health. And then, say after, you kill someone on my team, but you use, like, Touch of Death with the Monk 2 set. So you only bring that guy down to 30k health. Even though the lowest team members were both dead, it would still give the buff to my team because I got your dead player to 5k health, which is really, really awkward in my opinion. So Olivia, we just actually got you reconnected here to, to the chat room um, or, or actually to the show. Um, we're talking about the crowd. We're talking about the crowd shows you and, and what's been yeah. going wrong with it. How, how has this been affecting players throughout, throughout the, the course of this? Well, I think it's kind of it's an interesting one because people have been people have been very adamant. Like, there's been a lot of complaining on Twitter about say, oh, people are already starting to game it. It's breaking the game. You need to take this back out again. And I don't like. Unfortunately, I was disconnected, so I didn't know whether Jeremy mentioned that it was hilariously bugged with Cyclone. Yes, like, he did. He did. To be, he did mention that. Like, good job. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. The, the Druid Priest <laughs> Druids, <laughs> Druids coming. Uh, 
come into fruition. <laughs> finally, finally, you're coming back into your own, man. Exactly. Um, yeah, so it was, <laughs> it was, um, I think people are sort of saying already, oh, you know, it's, make, it's making people game the system, it's doing this, that, and the other. But, like, give it a chance, you know. People are just trying it out right now. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's really, really brand new to live servers. And obviously, yes, we've been playing with it on the PCR for yonks, but it's really brand new on live servers. It's not, like, it's not, it's not been sitting there for ages. It's not really probably like people who are lower down in the game probably don't even realize it's there yet. Like if you don't watch a lot of podcasts and like read a lot of blogs and read forums, most of the games in Arena don't run that long. And um, so, yeah, I think it's a case of like people just need to chill <laughs> and let it sit for a while. And once it's like less new and shiny and exciting, people will probably stop using it to, to change their play style. Like, like, you know, I can totally imagine people going into the Arena right now and being like, wait, 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 wait. Let's try and get the buff. Like, let's not try and kill the other team. Let's just play super, super defensively to see if we can get this awesome buff that they added into the game and then get to one-shot somebody. I can totally see people doing it. But it'll, like, it'll settle. It'll ha- give it some time, the internet, and it'll settle down. So yeah. it's been a couple months. The internet's given it time. <laughs> it's, been, it's been five years. The internet's given it time. Is it a good, cha- <laughs> is it a good change overall? Um, that has been introduced to servers. I don't disagree. I disagree with you, Olivia. I know you're going to say yes. Just give it time. It'll be fine. But no, <laughs> I want to troll. I want to troll. with my opinion that I have not yet expressed. I know where you're going, going with this. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. We disagree <laughs> yeah, about this, Bob. I, I know we do. I think it's, I, I personally, I like it. Like I've been playing a bunch of arenas lately where it's run, it's run long and like we've got the opposing team down so freaking low and they've just managed to like catch themselves at the last minute and heal back up again and it's so frustrating and like when I've been chatting to people I've been playing with just like oh if we had the crowd chase you we'd have won that we'd have won that and it's just like oh you know know what we did we said man we would have won that now we gotta wait three minutes for our cooldown. I hope we can hang on and then we'll do it again (laughs) (laughs) that's the real way people arena Yeah, I think it's a good change. What do you think, Jeremy? Uh, I am still kind of indecisive on this. I think it's still a little early to tell because people still haven't fleshed out the full system yet, in my opinion. There's been some, I've heard of some weird comps like double resto druid and twos. Granted, twos is it balanced around, but yeah. I still think that's very, very awkward and it shouldn't mm. really be a thing. Is that yeah. so is the comp there for double resto? Wait. Is the, is the comp there for double resto literally just turtle for until the buff appears? Pretty much. You cyclone the yeah. other. You cyclone the other guy. Bring the 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 guy's health. Double pop heart of the wild. Both pop heart of the wild. Nuke one guy down to fifty percent, and then just spam hots on yourself yeah. until heart of the wild comes back up again. It's. I can really, totally really, imagine that. It's really. I really can totally. Bro. Yeah, I could like I could totally imagine like for example in threes like disc disc blood. Or like you know, disc holy blood DK, and just being like able to pull the opposing team down to like you know, or even just in twos, like a disc freeze and a blood DK. Being able to pull problem. someone down whole, to fifty percent and then stay above it. The whole strategy is is no longer about having the winning team. It's having the like you want you want to talk about problems about turtling with with this buff and and not <laughs> having it how people turtle. That's all. That's all arenas are going to become is who can turtle better for for fifteen minutes hmm. and then get the buff. Yeah, I think there's an element of that, but I think it's sort of, I think the people, the, the number of, it's kind of one of those, the, the, the happiness of more people outweighs the happiness of fewer people. But there's, a, there's a better term for that. The needs, needs of the many, of the many outweigh, many outweigh the, the few. few. Or something. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like that. Like there are the, There's going to be those teams that do that. There's definitely going to be the teams that turtle. I am plotting one myself. So there's definitely going to be those teams that do that. Um, and, you know, that's, people are going to be awful no matter how the arena system works. But if the majority of people are enjoying it, it's a good thing. Um, we'll see. I, agree, I definitely agree with Jeremy that it's too early to tell yet. But given pushed to the five-year thing, I think it's probably a good change overall. It probably needs some tweaking to make it less viable for healer teams or blood defense. Last up this week, we want to talk about the Timeless Isles, but before we do, I want to tell you guys about a sponsor, another sponsor that we have right here on Game Breaker, one that we're super happy to have and one that we use every day. Shutterstock.com is a great tool to have if you are a part of the creative industry. Making assets is so difficult. If, you, if, if, if a lot of people out there, you make gaming videos, so I'm sure you use editing software 
um, and, and potentially use Photoshop to create custom thumbnails. Why not make those custom thumbnails uh, pop a little bit more with some custom images that you can have access to right on Shutterstock.com. It's super easy to use. You head on over to Shutterstock and uh, just type it in the field, whatever comes to mind. You know, up here we have Orc. We've got a whole bunch of different uh, icons of Orcs and uh, mystic creatures and whatnot, or or even, hey, maybe you're feeling uh, feeling like you want to find out a little bit more about Bulgin, so you type in troll. Well, these are not the right kind of trolls, but they got plenty of images to use, all available for download, as well as they're not just um, still images, they have uh, footage, and footage is another great tool to have if you are utilizing and trying to create graphics. One that I know off the top of my head, which um, I don't know anyone out there who's maybe trying to create a weather forecast, but this is just kind of shows you what Shutterstock offers, the level of detail. Having an animation like this um, takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to design yourself. And Shutterstock has hundreds of different kind of opening animations that you could use. A lot of people um, who make their own custom channel art go to um, video copilot and just copy tutorials there. I, so many people, uh, did we lose a little bit? Yet? No, we didn't. Um, I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, and, and I think that if you guys can just check out shutterstock.com, you'll find tons of animations available right at your fingertips to get your, uh, to get your channels made unique and started today. So if you guys head on over to Shutterstock right now and use the offer code GameBreaker9. You guys will get 25% off your new account. Um, all right, let's move on here to the Timeless Isles. This is a new zone that was added in patch 5.4 and there are all sorts of discussions that are taking place uh, about an item called the Sensor of Eternal Agony, that amazing PvP uh, item that flags you for everyone. I'll see if we're gonna get into this, but I've got some I've got some gripes about the sensor. <laughs> I feel like you've got some opinions, Mike Chapter. I've got, I feel like you've got some, some bubbling under the surface there. I've got some, I got some feels about the sensor of eternal feels. agony. And I'll get into that here in a second. Um but Wow, I'm all over the place. Wow, what is going on here? Um, did we just use Squishy? We did just use Squishy. We lost your camera, Squishy. Can you get that back on? Um yep. So this is an item that you guys can buy for a thousand timeless coins that makes you hostile to everyone, um, <laughs> including your own faction, and awards you with a currency called Bloody Coins for landing killing blows on other players. You can use these coins to buy items like a pet amount and a PvP trinket, among others. So um, I've got my complaints, and I'll get into <laughs> them, but... What are the, what is going on with cameras? Uh, Squishy, what are, do you, do you know what some of the complaints here are with, uh, that, that the masses are having? Some, some bugs and some issues. Uh, have you run into any with the sensor? Uh, to be honest, I've only used it once to get the, the, the single <laughs> achievement. Um, right, Thomas L on my server is a little busy. So, mm. no. So, Olivia, then. It's <laughs> not uh, really been your thing. What, what about you? What, what problems have you been running into? Um, I have been hearing a lot about problems with abilities like, for example, I know they hotfixed it to work with uh, the Priest Guardian Spirit. So it's abilities where something happens when you die that isn't death, but then kills you. So, for example, Mage Cauterizers. So you then you get, you get killed and then it cauterizes you up or something and then you come back down and it actually like, is not... DK Purgatory, for example, they, that, like Squishy, you, I know you know how that works. Like it kills you, yeah. but you don't die. You get purgatory, and then purgatory kills you. Um, right. So if you don't actually get the killing blow on something, then you won't get the bloody point. So I think there's been there is either a hotfix coming, or there's a hotfix um, already happened to fix it with purgatory. They fix it with guardian spirit. Um, so there's a couple of bugs here with it now. But Here's... I think it, more of what people are complaining about is actually how it's used properly when it's working. Well, hang on. And let I me stop you Mike, right there because another another issue, Mike, another uh, another issue I want to get out there with the, with the killing blow theory. Um, I can I can let yeah. go of the fact that like cause I've I've been running around with my friends and we've been trying to PvP and it's always we're always shouting you know who's going to get the killing blow, and I can get over that. I can get over the fact that it's just like okay, someone who gets the killing blow is the only one who gets it. But here's the the true problem where this lies. We also run around with a healer, 
How the hell? Like, unless and and he's been he's been trying to snipe the kills with Hammer of Wrath because he's a paladin. But um, <laughs> good that good job that man. Yeah, he he knows what's up. But that's the other thing is, is the killing blow makes it incredibly difficult for situations like that. I know that it's supposed to flag everyone and you can stay up in a party. Um, but. I think that that's obviously one part where healers are going to have a lot of griping to do is that you can't secure the killing blow if you're sitting there healing your group. That's not your job. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and I mean, think certain that, healers that's, have that's very good ways to do that. Yeah, certain good, like you say, your paladin friends, certain healers have a good way, like Hammer of Wrath and Paladin, Shadow Word, Death, and a Priest. Like, I, I love stealing killing blows when I'm in arenas. It drives people insane. I love doing it. <laughs> um, so, like, priests are in a really good position for that. But if you're a healer, like you, you pretty much have to roll DPS. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do other than just roll a DPS character in order to really effectively use. Sorry, roll DPS character and um, spec DPS, um, in order to actually use this. And like, yeah, I can see that being a problem. I, I hadn't even thought of that when I was rattling through the problems with the sense of eternal agony in my head. That hadn't even entered my skull. <laughs> my so problems with it are more like the other stuff. Well, hang on, because I got one more problem that, and, and we'll yeah. get into this the other stuff. Because I got one more issue that I have with mm -hmm. it. This was supposed to be an item that flagged you for everyone um, in PvP. I was kind of happy to see that when you grouped up, your your group could could heal each other, and you could work as a group to run around the island and kill people. Um, uh -huh. The problem with the sensor of eternal agony is it doesn't flag everyone for PvP. It creates a temporary, in essence, this is what I like to call it, a third faction. Anyone who flags themselves with the sensor becomes friendly to anyone else who's flagged themselves with the sensor. So yeah. I can't go kill another alliance member that I want to kill if they've already flagged themselves. Uh -huh. And I understand maybe that's working as intended. Maybe that's the way that it's designed. But that kind of defeats the purpose to me of like flag yourself for PvP and you can kill anyone because no I can't yeah I wanted to kill the dick that was running around with the sensor <laughs> flag and go kill him but he's alliance so I'm gonna flag myself and now I still can't kill him <laughs> exactly yeah that's it so it's like that was that's one of the sort of issues which I have with it is that you know if you have the sensor active you're immune to other people who have the sensor active it should make you hostile to everyone not just to people who don't have it active like that's really rubbish. <laughs> and like, so is it going to become the thing that like, it's just an arms race where everyone has to have it and be running around with it on? Like, so if the way, if the way to prevent yourself from being ganked by people with the sense of eternal agony up is to also have the sense of eternal agony up, like I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'll go get one and just run around like, yeah, I'm immune to all you dicks with the sense of eternal agony. Suck you. It sucks to be you, you know? It's like, that's really weird. It sh I, I, feel, I feel like that should be fixed. I feel like that's a bug and it should be fixed <laughs> for sure. Um, I think some of the other things that like I've definitely had people complaining to me um, and I haven't actually had the opportunity to test this out yet, but on PVE servers, people are saying that the flagging is acting weirdly. So obviously on a PVE server, you don't have to, like if you don't have your PVP flag up, people uh -huh. theoretically can't attack you. But if they walk into your AOEs, then you get flagged. Now, I thought that that was how it worked anyway on PvE servers. So if someone who no. is PvP flag steps into a... P no, it's not. Oh, okay, cool. I, I, could, I could be wrong. I've, I've I only played on them very on. temporarily. The <laughs> way that I, with the flag on all the time. So the, the way that I remember PvE servers is you're, you're blue flagged the entire time. Um, mm -hmm. Even if someone, even if a horde comes in and steps on my AoE... I'm not you're flagged not gonna, you're, you're as right. long as I haven't pre-activated my flag for that. We both have to have our flags active because even if I have gotcha. my flag active and they do not, they won't take damage from my AOE unless they're flagged. Cool. They've flagged there we themselves go. And as well. The chat room is saying that you are correct there. So I, I was incorrect. That's clearly not quite how it works on PVE servers. But, so that's what they're saying um, is also like anything that heals it. But I think it's more... There's obviously some weirdness going on there. So they're saying that if you step into, like if you've got, if you're AoEing some mobs down and someone with the sensor steps into your AoE, you then get PvP flagged. So that doesn't sound like it's working as intended if these people are actually correct. Um, they're also saying that healing people with a PvP flag off is making them PvP flagged. And now that I'm pretty sure is working as intended. Yes. Because you're involving yourself in the PvP there. Because I've done that before on low-level characters. and got. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. 
it, it turns into a giant brawl uh, on my server. There's a uh, there's one rare that drops a, that people have finally figured out that drops a mount, and people have mm-hmm. figured out that he spawns roughly forty five minutes to an hour. So between that forty five minutes to an hour, there are probably a hundred to two hundred people sitting on a tiny bridge. Oh um, really? That is Hulan, almost right? impossible. Yeah, Hulan, right? Mm. That is almost impossible to go by and click on the boss without clicking on someone with a sensor on. <laughs> yeah. Because he dies so fast with that many people around that mm. I think I've accidentally tagged someone a couple t- every single time I've tried to. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, and I think the, the biggest objections that I'm hearing, like people tend to email me about PvP stuff. The biggest objections that I'm hearing are people saying things like, oh, well, this just, you know, I, this just encourages ganking. And I kind of, because it's the killing blow thing again, I kind of agree with that. Like, I don't know quite how else they could do it with it in the game, but it's like, it's one, it's, it, you know, people will wait until you're low from killing a rare and then kill you with the sense of eternal agony up. Like, it won't be a sort of, like, P- well, PvP is never fair. Um, don't get me wrong, but it's just like, oh, you know, like, okay, so people will gank people. That, that's fine. That happens. Don't give them mounts and pets for it. You know? <laughs> like, don't reward them for this behavior, which is probably not that honorable. That's my, that's, I can, I, and I can understand those issues with it. I, I feel that way about it myself. Can I just say real quick, I, I, uh, I, 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 compl- I got completely lost. Um, maybe three, I I really did get distracted. I was looking through some of these awesome Shutterstock uh, <laughs> features. We've actually just like, stuff yeah, no, like I I literally I was I like my I, my <laughs> eyes caught this one and then this one as well. And I was looking at these. I was like, man, these would make sick guild intros. Like I don't know. Like everybody's got those intros for their guild before they before they do a, a heroic kill. I just, I I literally I got lost in in looking at these. Uh, mid conversation, so I apologize. But shutterstock.com slash gamebreaker. Go check them out. Um, there you go. Is it the other thing here that I think is really funny with the PVE that has started on the Timeless Isle? Is uh, I like I said, I, I'm trying to get back into uh, doing some arenas with my friends, and I was talking to him, and I was like, oh yeah, I was like, my PVP gear sucks. This is this <laughs> this island stinks because we're always getting in PVP scenarios. But he was like, no, 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 don't worry about it. The PVE gear is, is a lot better for this anyway. And that's that's causing an issue here. That, that's that's raising a big issue of, of the fact that um, there's a lot of world PVP going on, especially now with the sensor. Um, and a lot of people are necessarily disgruntled over the fact that PVP gear, PVP gear isn't the top tier when it comes to PVP here. So what's going on? What, what's what's the solution for this? Or, or, or are people just kind of need to get over it? It's, it's, oh man, it's so annoying. Like most, both Jeremy and I were giving it the whole mm-hmm <laughs> nod right there. It's like, yeah, that's about right. It is, it's, oh, it's so, it's, it's really frustrating just because like, you know, you can't, your, your PVP, even if you had, even if the Conquest vendors were even there for you to be able to buy Conquest gear, which they're not, by the way. Um, I think we covered that earlier. So your uh, PVP gear is at 496 at best. Um, obviously in PVP situations at the moment, scaling is being sort of slowly ticked up as people's gear improves in instance PVP. But in world PVP, people are running around like, you know, heroic raiders are running around with an item level of 560. So yeah, good luck with your 496 gear. And it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was that a yeah, truck like a that bit... just ran me over? <laughs> yeah. Some PvP power isn't going to mitigate a 65 item level difference. Newsflash blizzard. You know, and it's just like... Oh, for God's sake. And even so, like, even when, um, you know, when Conquest gear is suddenly available again, when the arena season starts, people are going to gear slowly. Like, you can't... Because people won't have 28k, 28K caps on live servers. Um, you know, people aren't going to be gearing up in one week. It's going to be considerably slower than that. So it's just like people, it's so frustrating. It's like, it, this is PvP. PvP gear should be the best of PvP. This is PvP. This isn't PvE. <laughs> For goodness sake, make it better. I don't know what they can do now, though. Like, unless they increase the not, item I mean, levels of PvP gear, but I can't see them doing that. But it's not, 
the, the, the other the other side of the argument though is that it's not PVP. I get that PVP is happening on a in, in a PVE zone and they've they've intended it for to to be that way, but it's not mm. like they designed the Timeless Isles to be a PVE or PVP zone. So you can't just say that this is PVP because it's not. It's happening, but it's it's it was never intended to be a PVP zone. Is it players attacking other players or attacking <laughs> the environment? I'm trying to attack the environment. It's not my <laughs> fault this douchebag comes over and hits me in the back of the head. I'm trying to quest. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's PvP. Players are... You, do, do you, know, you know what the initials stand for, right? Player versus player or player versus environment. It's PvP. It is literally PvP. That is precisely what it is. So it's it's not like, okay, yes, it's world PvP. It's not instance PvP. It's not meant to be balanced, yada, yada, yada. So it's not like... It is definitely PvP. I'm sorry. <laughs> then, then what is okay? Well, how is, how, be the best hang on, no, 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 hang on. How is this balanced then? Um, and I honestly, I can't remember. I, I remember it was fun, and a lot of people have fond memories of of South Shore World PvP being the best there was. Mm -hmm. And granted, I know obviously there's a lot of things that have changed since then. But why was that considered so balanced at the time? Um, because that's all that was. That was still a a, a PVE environment. But anyone who, who went and participated in South Shore PvP would tell you that's PvP. What's the difference here? Where's the line get drawn? Because it's the same damn thing. Isn't the difference just the 40, 50 item levels that PvP gear has fallen behind at this point? Because that's yeah, a exactly. massive amount of stat budgeting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, and also like someone in some, some uh, Valamir in chat says it was balanced. How rose tinted are your spectacles right now? World PvP is never <laughs> balanced, and they'll never be no. able to balance for it. But that's but exactly. That's, that, but it doesn't but that, mean that, that that's argument, okay for the PvP gear to be much, 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 much worse than the PvE gear. For goodness sake, making the fact that it is imbalanced and unfair doesn't mean it's okay to make it um, more imbalanced and unfair. Like two wrongs don't make a right. I want to argue with you, but I kind of agree. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, by yes. a, just by a small amount, do I agree with you on this subject? Um, but I don't know. I, I uh, let's just move yeah. on because I don't. I don't want to feel like I'm agreeing with Olivia. Uh, let's move I, on I to some viewer questions. Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Oh, can I say one thing first? Um, so hypothetically, if they were to fix the whole third faction thing with the sensor. How would you feel about if you activated the sensor, your gear scaled down to four, or to the current arena item level? But that's not. I don't think that that it's. The Ooh. problem isn't only coming. The problem isn't only coming from the people who are flagging themselves with the sensor. That's only half the problem because you still have horde members who are sitting in PVE gear and you're sitting in PVP, or alliance members who are sitting in PVE gear and you're sitting. It's it's not the sensor isn't the only thing that's that's molding this problem right i think that's the no but i think like, that's what we're talking about now we're talking about the sensor right now and the pve gear influence on that i think i think that's a great idea squishy jeremy sorry okay well what about if you go one step further battle fatigue activates upon co uh, pvp combat what if hypothetically gear scaled down the second you enter pvp combat i think the Anywhere. problem with that is world bosses didn't they say that that was the problem with that? Was that it would be it, it would be active for world bosses, so they couldn't then. Um, <laughs> you're just doing the, the you're just doing the the, the go for when I freeze, aren't you? That's what's going on here. <laughs> I can see myself have. frozen and I, looking bored. I look so that's... bored. Oh, my dang God! It. Your camera broke again. <laughs> oh right, man, well, uh... I, I'm in the room by myself. I'm so lonely in here. <laughs> um. I, I, I'll wrap up here so that we can uh, throw to viewer questions while we get your uh, why we get your camera fixed. Um, but I do I, I think that you know I don't want to say that's the solution, but I think that could potentially be an option to to fix this whole issue of PVE is higher than PVP by simply you know we, we've seen the scaling um, gear come into play with proving grounds and challenge modes. Now it's not that crazy to think that at some point. Uh, we could see it affect PvP. So I think I agree with you there. It'd be interesting to see how that develops. Um, looks like we got camera fixed, but I'm going to throw to a, a viewer question here. So Star Twister asks, 
What if we could take old items and make them viable gear again? I don't have a quote card. I'm sorry. Um, what if we could take old items and make them viable yes, gear again? Yes, you do. I forgot. I, know. <laughs> I was bad and didn't load them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we have an item upgrade system in place. Why not take it to the next level by transposing the item level of a new item onto an older one to have its stats increase to match? That way, people will still have to do endgame content to get gear, but it could be uh, it could be whatever gear they want it to be. Either keep it as is, um, or uh, keep it as is, brand new, or use it to revive old items that they love. I bet if you ask chat room, each person could name off at least a dozen items that they would want to be able to use again. Now, I'm sure we could ask chat room that, but I think that we could also ask chat room, hey, chat room, did you guys transmog those items? Because I'm pretty sure that's what that feature was implemented for. What about you guys? What do you think? Uh, I, I, it, it, it would de really depend on how it's implemented, because yeah, how how exactly would you have to? It's just to... backwards transmogging. That's all this is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I can see, like I, I don't know quite how. Like I can see this also really messing things up because, like, stat budgeting being odd on older items, or or. You know, like maybe they did the like balance between different stats weirdly on older stuff, which would now, if you took that forward and used it now, that would make everything strange and terrible. Um, so yeah, I I don't know quite how they do it, but I I can understand why people would say this. I can understand it, but why not just transform it? Like it, I can understand like props. Like can you imagine the like people that, bringing okay, the yeah, dragon yeah, yeah. He, he even said thing? Star Star Twisters in chat, and he, and he actually said it's about the weapons with cool abilities. So it's it's mostly about procs that he's getting at because obviously you you lose okay. your your interesting procs when you transmog. So okay, now that that's clarified, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think. Um, well, sorry, and apologies. I took your the version of your question off Facebook because it was a bit more TLDR than the one you emailed me. Uh, so apologies for missing that out. Um, but yeah, I I guess like like maybe if it was a cool effect that would be good. Um, but I don't I don't know I I don't see the the benefit of this over transmog particularly. Um, but maybe the effects, I guess. But, but a lot of them work on Transwalk still, like the Warlock effect of the hat with the little horns and the wings when you jump around, that works. But things that don't, which I can get behind what he's saying, even hmm. though Blizzard implemented this for Feral Drew, it's the Flame Kitty staff. That didn't. Yeah. That wouldn't transfer over when Transmogging. Yeah, that's fair. The, the trinket that transformed you into a Varkral from, or, or, or one of many things from ICC. There are items out there. I, I do see what he's saying. There are items out there that have really cool on, on you spell effects that transform you or do other uh, awesome things. Um, but it sucks when you have to replace them because they're no longer exciting. The problem with it, obviously, is just balance. Like, even in current tier, Blizzard has to go in and nerf every single one of last year's trinkets because they're so good. So, like, as much as it'd be cool, it would have to be cosmetic only. Or else you're, yeah. you run into a whole bunch of problems with balance. Well, even yeah, Star, sure. Twister, Star Twister, even, uh, again, in, in chat said, um, Iron Foe, chance to hit your next attack, you get extra two, atta two extra attacks. That's exactly what Squishy was saying. How do you balance mm. that? You can't constantly be, be changing the balance of these items. Th th you think it's hard to balance gear and items and procs and everything now? Let's throw everything since the game's inception. Yeah, everything that's ever been game. In. Like, imagine Suddenly, all tier sets. Like, the amount of time yeah. to break all tier sets and that sort of thing. Like, imagine if they had every tier set since tier sets began still active with the plot. That would be <laughs> insane. <laughs> the theory crafters would have a field day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I wouldn't even, <laughs> wouldn't even want to play that game. All right, let, next up, uh, mm. Connor Moen asked, are you guys happy with being able to hit 90 and gearing up to 496? Uh, without even trying, sort of take a, uh, sort of takes away the game if you are able to nearly do sword uh, or sword uh, siege of Orgamar LFR. I'm very happy with it, mostly because <laughs> straight I'm happy about it. <laughs> I never played my I I got I I didn't even get my mage to ninety. Um, yeah. And then the moment that this happened and I had all this like extra gear, I was like, I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my mage to ninety. Why not? Like, <laughs> boop, there, full, ready, good. 
Like, yeah. I I exactly. don't I I I I see what he's saying here, but I think that we have to look back at it. How how much how many of you out there, honest to God, want to go run uh, all of the the previous tiers, Throne of Thunder and and Moshugan and Heart of Fear? You don't. As much as you, the the people who are where we're at now want the other people to run it because we had mm-hmm. to, but that's it. You, you'd never want to run that if you were in that situation again. And again, even with alts, I don't want to run it again with my mage. So hell no. I really <laughs> like this, uh, this new system because it means that I can actually still play my mage and, and be happy to play my mage without having to go through all of the grind that I've been going through over the past year for my druid. Yep. Pretty much exactly that. Like I, I pretty much one hundred percent agree with Mike Schaffner. I actually feel a little bit dirty. You should. Kinda We're weird. agreeing together. What is this? Yeah, We're not supposed to agree. Weird. No, it's awful. We're meant to fight all the time, Mike. But I actually <laughs> completely true. agree with you on this one. Like I'm really happy about, um, you know, just the ability to jump in and get four nine six gear straight away. That's fantastic. And sure, if you're a brand new ninety who is like, you know, who's geared it terribly you're probably gonna have a bit of trouble you're probably gonna die an awful lot on the timeless isle <laughs> but you're gonna have some fun like it's gonna be fun and you're gonna get those items and you're gonna have a ball and it's gonna be 496 gear and here's, why shouldn't you like they always do this catch-up stuff here's what they should have done and honest to god mm-hmm. i think this would have this would have solved the whole problem make it blue mm-hmm. make the gear blue no one would have gave a shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, well, everybody yeah. would have been like, oh, it's just blue gear. It's not epic. So you're not. And that's always the argument. Epics don't feel special. Yeah. They, they could have just made yeah. the gear blue. Yeah. And and people would have been, oh, you're just you're just in blue gear. So it doesn't matter. And then people still would have felt like their epics were special from the raids that they've been working for. Yeah. And I mean, I think 496 gear is low enough on the, on the sort of general pecking order of gear now that it could have been blue. And then if you have the burden of uh, burden of eternity, eternity, burden of eternity, yeah, it's, there's so many burdens, man, it's confusing. <laughs> um, but if you had the burden of eternity to upgrade it to five three five, then that would make it epic. Like I think, I think that actually works pretty well. Good job, Mike Shaffner. Came up with an idea <laughs> on the spot, stole it from chat room. Especially, what do you think? <laughs> uh, so, I I really like it's it's a good catch up because it it catches up to the previous tier. It's not an instant catch up like the five mans uh, at the end of Dragon Soul, which basically caught you up. You could run Dragon Soul instantly. Mm. The one, my one gripe about it is it's the same item level as the new LFRs, which means that hypothetically you could get straight into the new LFR with the new gear. I think that's a little awkward, but I'm not completely against it. So, how would you feel though with that with that situation? How would you feel based on what Olivia and I just said? And, and I I still say, and by my standpoint, my mage is a perfect example. I, I'd I really wouldn't be inclined to play my mage at all if I threw all the gear, but I still had to go run Throne of Thunder in order to start running Siege of Orgamar with my mage. I wouldn't. I, I again, I would just be like, okay, here's the gear. At least you have it, but I'm still not going to play you because I'm yeah. sick of Throne of Thunder. That's yep. just me. Me too. <laughs> it's, it's me too. I'm all over it. I think it's great. It's definitely I think it's great. Like, sorry. Oh god, yeah. No. Yeah, I think it. I think I think late late expansion five man's a good thing. I would have liked some late expansion. I would just like some five man's after the ones that we currently have. I'm still sort of standing firm on that. I don't think timeless isle isn't is a replacement for five man's. But I really like the catch up mechanic, and I welcome it. And I think it's like yes, finally now I will able be able to play my army of outs that I wanted to be playing from day one. So. If that's if that's not how you play the game, then that's fine. But that's how I play it. Real quick to uh, finish I, up to, to to finish up this conversation, I wanna I wanna bring back kind of my, my argument about blues. And I saw hmm. I, I thought as soon as I said that, some people would be like, well, you know, every uh, we we had this argument about how my fifteen dollars are just as good as yours. Would the player base be disgruntled, even even if it affected LFR and flex and normal? The gear and eye level, nothing on any of it changes except the color of the gear. And I think going to green for LFR would be a little bit too drastic, but not, everything stays the same. The only thing that changes is the color of the gear from LFR, flex, and normal. Um, do you think that could be a solution um, or would people get, ang- would, would people get angry over that? 
Do people do people running LFR literally feel entitled to to a purple? You're I think now they do. <laughs> I think they do now because they brought it in like that. Like if you were to then go back and downgrade everything, I think people would complain. Um, like the problem with LFR is that it's um, it's it, it's it, the problem with LFR is it exists in the first place. Like LFR, sh you know, they they put they brought it in with epics. They brought it in how it stands at the moment, so they can't now go back. They can't like pull the gear down from epic to blue. They can only like it's the carrot and stick thing, isn't it? Like you can't change it back down on the older stuff. You have to bring in shinier things, the newer stuff, like they did with the heirlooms in flex normal and heroic. Could they do they it with can't, the new expansion? Like, oh, we're taking this. Like if they take taken tear out of LFR, for example, like that would have Could... caused like really lots of grumpy, angry people. You can't take stuff away. You have to add better. Could they do so, it with, with with whatever next expansion we get? Obviously, the precedent has been set so. that it's epics, but but maybe yeah. maybe if when you hit ninety five or one hundred, you're still in greens, and then you don't make that upgrade to purple. Suddenly, mm -hmm. LFR offering blues is an actual upgrade. Yeah, I still don't think so. No, what do you think, Squishy? <sighs> Will they do it? Probably not. But do I want to see it? Kind of. I, I, I'm a little torn on this one because I, I don't, I don't think they're gonna, I don't think it's possible. Like Olivia says, they've already handed out epics. People want their epics, and they're not gonna be satisfied with rares. Not gonna be satisfied, satisfied with rares. Squishy, you can follow him right down. That's not squishy. Uh, at squishy. <laughs> <laughs> be sure to check out Waypoint. Squishy helps me produce that every week. Thank you so much, Squishy. And uh, be sure to check out the HXC podcast that goes live every Sunday. Got anything else going on, Squish? Mm, nope, not really. Olivia Grace, you can follow her. Oh, all the cameras. There Get it is. Get the Twitter uh, right. Get the. There you go. Olivia D. Grace, <laughs> you can follow it. her right down there. You guys have been jumping around Olivia cameras Grace. this whole entire show, so don't blame I'm me. I'm sorry. It's, I, think, I don't know whether it's both of my and Squishy's internet is all over the place or if our software is actually having a bit of an issue. Anyway, follow uh, Olivia D. Grace. <laughs> Be sure to check her out on Talk As Roth, uh, Zam.com, WoW Insider, here on Gabrick TV, all over the place. Yeah. And if you're in California right now, go say hi. Because no, don't. That would be really weird. Don't, Cali don't California is a down small in California. Don't <laughs> encourage people to do that. California is a small state, so I'm sure you guys can find her. Uh, you guys can follow me <laughs> at Mike Schaffnitz. Be sure to check out Waypoint. It went live up on Tuesday. Um, be sure to check out all the stuff that goes on here at GameBreaker.tv. As well as check out this awesome other guild animation that you can have from Shutterstock.com. Thank <laughs> God. You are obsessed with Shutterstock. That. that is so awesome. Everyone could use that, and all you guys gotta do is hang out, just sign up for Shutterstock. Everyone used it, it, it wouldn't be special. Well, then one of you guys should go use it. Go check it out right now, <laughs> Shutterstock.com. Gamebreaker 9, 25% off. All right, thank you guys, everybody, so much for watching. We'll see you next week.